In the beginning, America was white. Don't believe me? Take a look. See? It's all white. Oh, I'm sure, and it was empty, I'm sure that there were a couple of uh, squirrels running around in the trees, but there was nobody there. It was completely empty land just waiting for us to go in and take it. All those cute little pilgrims with their cute little pilgrim hats, looking all anemic like they just got bled dry, like a vampire just gotten, you know, gotten to them. Right, all completely empty, or so we are taught to believe. When in fact, when in fact, the Pew Research Center, their numbers show us that every year America grows browner, gayer, more feminist, and more agnostic. And that drives old white guy Christians just crazy! And so they keep peddling this theme that in the beginning, America was white. Which isn't true because when you look at the diaries of those cute little pilgrims, you find, oh, they had a bunch of neighbors and they had red skin or brown skin, really. And, uh, you know, they kind of helped them out when things got tough, right? And so then we find that the old white guy Christians sort of backpedal one step. They say, well, maybe they were there, but our culture was superior being white. And that means they're skipping right over that first winter when everybody starved to death in the Pilgrim's Colony until the Indians showed up and the Native Americans showed up and gave them some pumpkins, which is where we get pumpkin pie. Right. But still, they take one step back and they still cling to their whiteness is virginal. Whiteness is pure. Whiteness is superior in all ways. Look, we have the Lamb of God. We have the dove, all these wonderful symbols. Who needs a white lamb? Who needs the white dove? Symbol of purity and innocence and superior power and all that kind of stuff. I say we can choose better ones. For example, how do we know that white is superior culture? Why? Because we have marshmallows. Who does not love a steaming cup of hot cocoa? But that's brown, so it's sort of a mixed metaphor. Okay, well, anyway, moving on. We have belly of a dead fish. Why is it belly of a dead fish? Because we kill the fish. Why we kill the fish? Because all the toxic mercury we have in the waters. And then there's nose candy. You know, cocaine, right? Which Brett Kavanaugh, which, uh, uh, which, uh, uh, well, which I sound like I have too much of whenever I'm doing this film shoot. <laughs> and then we have elderly hair, which is white and sparse and makes us feel impotent. Then we have drowning polar bears. Why is it drowning? Because we refuse to address climate change in this country. And then we have what? Oh, smelly underwear and socks of your brothers when he comes by just to say hello and not because he wants you to do his laundry. And then we have that uh, white number 10 envelope that comes from the IRS letting you know that you owe more taxes. In fact, they're going to throw you in the slammer unless you pay it up. Wasn't it fun? Let's do it again. Oh, we can do white paper towels and toilet paper, which, you know, clutter up our landfills because, again, we want to drown more polar bears. And what else? We have, um, 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 oh, Anonymous, which used to be kind of cool. You know, they're kind of rebels and activists, but then they sort of became the in crowd and now they just freak us all out, terrifying us with the thought that they might crash the power grid right in the middle of our favorite TV show. Oh, and then we have eggs, right? Egg shells, because they always, you never really know with an egg and you never know if it's rotten until you actually open it. Do we have chamber pots? Enough said, unless you're Trump, because your chamber pot is probably gold instead of white. Then we have snowmen, which make us feel fat, and the reminders of nuclear winter, in case Kim Pong Pong Pong, which is what the Chinese say, that's what they call him, Kim Fat Fat Fat. You know, the little rocket man in North Korea, if he actually calls Trump's bluff. Then we have, oh, we have light bulbs, planned obsolescence, isn't capitalism a wonderful thing? And then we have... The Ku Klux Klan, so comforting a sight. Yes, we have all these wonderful symbols of whiteness. It kind of leaves you with this feeling that maybe a little too much white isn't so bright after all. Maybe a little brown is better added to the mix. In fact, I think maybe we need a new formula after all. When you consider the numbers, 15% of the population are immigrants and yet they fund, found like 30% of the businesses. Of course, some wag will say, well, those are just taco trucks. And yet over half, half, of the businesses that are worth a billion dollars after 10 years are founded by immigrants. Those are some pretty impressive taco trucks, don't you think? Yes, we need a new formula, and it's this one. Immigrant equals cash. Immigrant equals cash. I'd love to do something high-minded, law, truth, justice, all that kind of stuff, love of heart, but no, these same people just gave themselves a $1.5 trillion tax cut in a $20 trillion economy. No, we have to hit them in the wallet. 
immigrant equals cash. That's the new formula. So I want you today to prove this, to work for this by finding a white supremacist. And if you're daring, give him a penny, a brown penny. Immigrant equals cash. That's the new formula for the 21st century of this country.